battle under the Golden Tooth is about to begin, and the war between the Lannisters and the Riverlands are, yes, about to ignite. The war in Westeros is about to kick off uh, as we return to Game of Thrones. Uh, this, I believe, the battle got under the Golden Tooth. Um, yeah, it's like one of the first battles in the sort of like the War of the Five Kings. Um, and yeah, it's basically. The Westlands invading the Riverlands. Uh, the Golden Tooth is one of the passes into the Riverlands uh, from the Westerlands. And yeah, the uh, basically the Riverlands basically just try, try and block off the, the pass from the Lannisters uh, to access it. Uh, the Lannisters basically start raiding uh, and sort of pillaging villages around, weakening the Tully force that uh, is defending the pass. And then with uh, the Tully's outnumbered, the Lannisters strike and attack. And in history, or like in law, defeat uh, the Tully forces. Um, they actually do outnumber them again today uh, by about 600. But uh, they certainly have uh, worse troops here to the Lannisters. A lot of sort of like Pikes of the Rock, which are pretty cheap. Uh, there's also a lot of levy uh, units as well. A lot of levy spears on this flank over here to support the cab. But yes, it's good to be back with some more Game of Thrones Total War. And I have paused this um, battle as... Uh, yeah, it's very fast one. Um, but yes, if you want to see more Game of Thrones action on the channel, um, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and a comment to show your support. We have got, I've got another uh, glorious one v one that is really, it's pretty close as well. This one was a pretty close one as well, and has a lot of action in a very short amount of time. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes down. Um, and yeah, the uh, Golden Tooth. We would have done a large one, but it's actually only a one v one map, so. Uh, yeah, it kind of, I guess, is like hard-coded as just a 1v1 map. I feel like you could have definitely more on this. And you could have like a little siege up here if you wanted to do like a sort of defense of the Golden Tooth. Um, but yeah, you definitely, I feel like could have more armies on here. I don't know why it's just stuck to the 1v1. But it is. But yes, this is the Ice and Fire mod for Total War. This pillar is a book-inspired Game of Thrones mod, not the show-inspired one, which is why you don't see crazy sort of armor. For those of you that are new, and if you want to try it out and you haven't already, you can do so. Uh, the link is down below in the description. It's an easy install of Mod DB if you want to get it. Um, but yes, House Tully are back. We saw them in the uh, the last video as they were fighting off against the Ironborn. Now they have to face the Westlands. You know, House Tully has it hard. They have to face a lot of invaders, it seems. They have some damn gorgeous looking units, to be fair. And uh, they have some Gorpin fish as well on their shields. And yeah, we have Sworn Swords in the front line here. Along the yeah, more swan swords, we've got some pikes as well to match up against the Lannisters pikes. We've got uh, spear sergeants here, swan swords again. We've got some Tully knights to a shock cav variant, and uh, yeah, they look pretty damn cool. I think both yeah, Lannister and um, yeah, the knights of the Castle Rock are also a shock cav. I think the Lannister and Tully have both brought the same amount of cav. No, they haven't. Tully has brought one less, which could be very, very important. It looks like already uh, spear sergeants getting shot at by. How uh, Lannister already firing away. Um, it is kind of more minor houses that take part in this one. I think it's House Vance and House Piper for the Tullys. And uh, I think it's like Clegane and House Brax and a few others that are really the, uh, the people that attack the House Lannister. There is a host led by Sir Jamie Lannister. So there must be some, La I'd imagine there are probably some Lannister troops amongst them. Um, but we don't have those minor houses yet. I hope one day that we have all those houses added. It'd be awesome if they are. Um, but yes, uh, we just are going to use Tully and Lancer, just to keep it simple. Um, they were, yeah, it's more probably like Vance and Piper for the Tullys, and there would have probably been some Lannisters, but a lot of, uh, of that other sort of like vassals, more than likely, were fighting in this one. It seems like, yeah, we've got, yeah, the Swords of the Rock getting ready, they're going to stretch out their line, they kind of need to. This is, uh, I guess, technically like the Men at Arms. Uh, but they're definitely better than men at arms for uh, the Lannisters. More like, yeah, I think they are just more like just like uh, knights, like sword swords, uh, like the Tullys have. And it looks like the Tullys are going to go straight on in here. Spear sergeants going in, Been very aggressive here onto the uh, sword of the rock, and in they go. Cav has also engaged on this flank here. And the, I think the Tullys got the jump on the Lannisters. The Lannisters are now going in with shields of the rock, try and pin down the uh, sworn sword, uh, sworn spears there. Yeah, both sides sort of level pegging there, and it looks like yeah, the cab is going in on the other side as well. Definitely uh, has been caught out again by uh, the Tully knights. 
You could argue that this Tony Knight general here is Lord Vance. And yeah, the infantry line is also uh, colliding now as we have sworn spears. And spears are just going in against, yeah, swords of the rock. You'd imagine the swords might beat the spears. I'd, I'd imagine pikes going in against each other. That's a good uh, matchup there from the two sides. We're actually going to see uh, a uh, knight's cast as well. You could argue this is like Jamie here. He's swinging on around. He's going to sneak in behind here. This is a bit of a risk. We do have uh, river and rangers here and crossbows ready to go. And crossbows are definitely the most armor-piercing of the the, uh, of the archers. And there you go. In goes uh, the general for the land. Getting a good charge, getting a good rear charge down to the spear sergeant. He's freed up, able to do this. Pops a brace as well. And he's taking a lot of casualties on the return there. That is not good at all. He needs to get out of there ASAP. He's down to 14 right. That was an insane redu uh, reduction there. And yeah, he's down to 13 now. It's getting even worse. And he's already wavering. And that's not a good start there for the Lannisters at all. Over on this side here, though, Tully's general is also losing. Looks like Shields of the Rock managed to get into combat here. They need to get this cavalry moving immediately as well to the uh, Lannisters. And there you go. General has oh, fallen. General that is uh, Jamie Lannister already uh, dead and buried. That is not good. <laughs> What a change to the war that would be if Jamie was dead. And that's prime Jamie with both hands. But yeah, he is gone. That is not good. And the Lannisters have quite a few uh, levy units. That could cost them now. Uh, these guys might start to waver and break. And yeah, already these guys are losing here, Cassidy. Knights going in. Smashing into the pikes. And that was really risky because pikes are devastating the cab. They really are. And there you go. Pikes of the Rock already wavering. Um, we've got more, I think, over here as well. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. They're not wavering at all, but actually now. We have got Pikes of the Rock now wavering. And that's because of no general. Now the uh, Knights of uh, Cassidy Rock though, can rear charge the gen here. Surround him. And maybe both sides will have no general in a moment. It could be a very even battle here. Both sides may be about to be generalless. Uh, the Tullys definitely have a very quality uh, army. It's a smaller army, though, because uh, because of its quality. The Lannisters have definitely gone for a bit more spam. The enemy general there you go, enemy dead. general is dead. <laughs> like, Levy Spears are holding up a very elite uh, cavalry unit. That's all, like, the, uh, the risk you run by uh, bringing... Well, it's a risk with uh, bringing these cheap spears. But when it pays off like this, it's a big win because it allows your cap to go elsewhere and do stuff. Like charge into crossbows, which is pretty suicidal, but needs to be done. Silence these guys, get rid of these crossbows. They're gonna go into the next one as well. In go the Lannisters. Really nice charge. Yeah, cutting down those crossbows. It caused so much grief to us so far. Uh, the front line is starting to uh, break for the Tullys, it seems that like. I think. Also, the added sort of risk of having units in behind is what's breaking them quicker than the Lannister ones. Also, I think maybe army losses. You can see, like, look, they're down to 500 out of, yeah, they had about 2,000 men, and they're down to 500 now. And the uh, Lannisters have only lost around about 500 troops, even though they've lost a the general. So it could look like it could be a very resounding victory, even if... Uh, both sides have lost the general in the moment. We'll see. Knights of Cassie Rock going to keep uh, swinging on around. It's all relatively healthy here. This one also, you know, not too bad. Yeah, the pikes are uh, going to be a, a threat. If these guys turn their pikes around, they could murder this entire camp. I uh, just saw the charges coming in. There you go. Now Knights should be able to encircle and kill off the pikes. Look, you can see. Even that one guy there just turned around and killed a whole bunch of his cab. They might break, you know, the knights. Wavering at 26, and yet the pikes are sort of wavering, but not really too much. The other cab as well seems to have gone in knights of Castle Rock here. What they charge against uh, Sworn Swords? Although they're doing a little bit better. Swords of the Rock, though, yeah, nearly breaking here. And there you go, cab breaking. Men have given up and are running for their lives. And the other one might still be alive, just about. Yeah, that's gonna uh, be able to retreat. And it looks like it's gonna go for a charge as well into the river and pikes. And it doesn't matter because the pikes have already broken. 
kind of farming a few kills here, making sure these guys stay dead. And then the flank still continuing over here. And yet, yeah, Tully's have River Run Rangers, which is a medium bow unit. And uh, if I know anything from Rangers, they're pretty good at melee as well, which I guess is an asset. And there you go. There you go. A victory for uh, the Lannisters. Apparently, it's a decisive victory. It didn't feel like one. I mean, apart from, yeah, like a couple of units, uh, especially the Cav and the General being lost, uh, the army is pretty still intact. Um, but yeah, it certainly was a fun one. I mean, General being lost right at the beginning for the Lannisters was a big, big risk here. And uh, yeah, I mean, it could have sent the battle in the other direction. You never know. Um, but yeah, in history, it was a pretty decisive uh, victory. Jamie Lannister pretty decisively defeats the uh, host of Vance and Piper. Um, and yet, in this one here... They were, the Riverlands were pretty well defeated as well uh, once they lost the general. Levy Spear getting 104 kills, though, is not so bad. Longbows of the Rock, 103, 98 kills. The Swords of the Rock, 93 kills. Uh, Knights of Cassidy Rock, 118. And then, yeah, 278 with this one here. It's still pretty healthy. And, yeah, the Riverlands, they might not have huge kills. Yeah, like Sworn Swords, 52, 52 here. Uh, Crossbow's getting 56 kills. And more importantly, on Jamie Lannister, 72 kills with the Pike. And then the uh, Rangers getting 72 kills as well. Yeah, they had a very rough day, did the Riverlands. This one, I think numbers-wise, they just brought a much more expensive army. I think uh, having learned how to play this mod a little bit, I think you've got to bring uh, some cheap assets uh, and then some more expensive assets and try and supplement like the cheap ones by backing them up with more expensive stuff. Like my Pikes rarely fought without the uh, Swords of the Rock. And... Um, I brought really cheap archers because I feel like archers are just strong anyway. So you don't need to bring like insanely good ones unless you can bring uh, like some pretty good bang for your buck infantry as well. But there you go, guys. That is today's Game of Thrones uh, battle. It is a short one, um, for, but it is a 1v1. And it's a, a cool sort of um, battle that we got out of the way. Golden Tooth, uh, which I always kind of feel like that's a fun one to show off. You know, the start of the War of the Five Kings sort of. Uh, with the Westlands invading the Riverlands. And yeah, if you want to see more uh, Game of Thrones action on uh, the channel, then do check out the videos appearing on your screen. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the Game of Thrones content. And until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.